Hey friends. Today I want to share about an anti-racism practice that I use with myself to make my heart more expansive and inclusive. For the purposes of this discussion, I take it as a given that it's impossible to grow up in the United States, and probably in most other parts of the world, without ingesting a heavy dose of racism along the way. I find it useful to frame this experience in these terms because talking about racism as something that we're exposed to and that we ingest, rather than as inherent quality in ourselves, makes it easier, from my perspective, to see it as something that I can engage in healing myself around, rather than something that I have to feel ashamed about. It's not my fault that I have been exposed to racism on a daily basis for my whole life, but it is my responsibility to heal myself so that I don't harm others with this sickness. I want to share one of the ways that I work with myself as an antidote to the cultural poison of racism. Before I do that, though, I want to share the foundational practice for this, which is, at the advice of many people of color in my life for years, I make a point to go out of my way to expose myself to media that is people of color centric. I especially find it useful when it is media both by and for people of color, rather than media by people of color that is targeted to a white audience although that can be useful too. I use these spaces to listen and find other spaces to process the feelings that might come up for me in this. This is a way that I can take responsibility for my own healing, and I've found that it feels really good. So the practice that I've layered on top of exposing myself to people of color-centric media is this. It's sort of two, or you might say three parts. The first is, when I'm consuming people of color-centric media, I put myself in the position of the people and the characters on the screen or on the page, and I try to imagine feeling the way that they express or describe. The second thing I do is I put myself in their shoes, and I try to imagine what I would feel in the same situation. And then the third step is, I pay attention to the places where there's a gap and the places where there's a connection between those two things. And I try to learn about the expansiveness and the diversity of human experience, as well as the places of connection of human experience through those gaps and connections. The reason I do this is because I know that one of the ways that racism operates is to dehumanize people of color in our hearts and in our, our like baked in intuitions. We see this when, for example, doctors take the pain of patients of color less seriously than they take the pain of white patients. So I'm trying to work against that tendency in myself and to provide myself a path toward a more expansive understanding of the connections I have with every human, regardless of color or ethnic background. Another way that we know racism works is to clump groups together, overgeneralize on stereotypes, and then project those onto the individuals as though the group is a monolith rather than a collection of individuals with their own experiences. So my goal with this practice is to relate in a deeply human way with a wide variety of experiences of people of color to bring those experiences close to my heart and to predispose myself to seeing people of color as individuals rather than a collection or a group. I can do this practice when I'm watching lighthearted media like She's All That and when I'm watching heavier news stories like the most recent story of a person of color being killed by a white person who expects not to see any consequences for their act. I use this practice not to appropriate the experience of people of color, but to bring it close to my heart and to train myself to see all people, regardless of color, as siblings in our shared humanity. I found this to be an effective way to train my heart to be more expansive 
and more inclusive than white supremacist culture has trained it to be. If this practice sounds helpful to you, I'd love if you try it. If you do, I'd really love to hear what your experience is of it. Thanks for listening and for joining me in the work to move our culture away from white supremacy and toward more diversity and inclusivity every day.